Hello, my lovely hummingbirds. How's it going, everyone? Yes, there is no background, as I am temporarily in my parents' place for the time being until I get a permanent home. Now, uh, hi, my lovely hummingbirds. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Makeup and Motivation here on... Mm, pop culture how's it going everyone i don't have my stand which is why the phone is moving all over the place along with me once i find it uh you'll definitely get on the second half of this clip however uh, before we begin today's episode i do want us all to please take a moment of silence for everyone that we have lost in the world of uh, music movies entertainment popular culture but especially to all the lives that have been lost during the fires in Maui. Join me now, please, for a moment of silence. Thank you all for joining me in this moment of silence. I really appreciate it. Now, my lovely hummingbirds, for today's episode, we are discussing a topic of conversation that I've put off for a really long time. Uh, not on purpose. I was just moving. <laughs> so, sorry, I'm like really trying to hold it, but I'm a little shaky here. Uh, yeah, it is what it's like to be the villain in somebody else's story. And for today's makeup inspiration, we have none other than uh, villainous, supreme gorgeousness herself, Shigo. And if you can hear my AC blasting in the background, it's because it's supposed to be a cool 100 and something today in Chicago. And considering yesterday was a 90 something and it felt like 108, that AC ain't coming off. So, yeah, of course, let us start with the makeup look. Enjoy. Hi, my lovely hummingbirds. So for today's makeup look, we are going to be using two makeup palettes, so jaded by ColourPop as well as Juvia's Place, the Zulu palette, and a very, very gorgeous pigment, a Dumb Blonde Glitter Cosmetics. To kick us off from the So Jaded ColourPop palette, we are using the shade Geodude. And for this one, you're gonna do it on the upper brow bone area, sort of just above the crease, and you are gonna make a wing of sorts to really give a little highlight to the moral compass that is Shigo. I also like it because, you know, once all the makeup was done, it gave kind of an orange tinge, hinting at Kim Possible a little bit slight, but not really. <laughs> And once you've gone ahead and done that, we're going to go into our crease of our eyelid with this gorgeous mossy forest green shade just to deepen the look a little bit more. Once we've done that on both eyes, we're going to go in with Emerald to give this a shimmery. Honestly, can I say we're not going for a green smoky eye with this transition? I cannot, but it is definitely going to be a smoky eye with a twist. And on this, you're going to go a little bit below the crease and onto the eyelid area. Thank you. 
And now for the upper brow bone highlight area, we went in with the shade My Precious because honestly, nothing more than just to add a little varying degree of intensity to this look, plus attributing to the paleness of Shigo's skin color. <laughs> Now, to match the villainous glowing green, well, half of her catsuit anyway, we're going in with the Demblon Glitter Cosmetics Pigment in the shade Alien. And on this, you are going to tap and swipe on your eyelid area. It is so bright, it is so pretty, I'm so happy about it. Love this fucking color. <laughs> Once you've gone ahead and done that, we're going to go in with this gorgeous shimmery lime green from the Zulu by Juvia's Place. And I did do a little differently on this second time around that I did it. In the video, not so much, but I did fluff it upwards as well into the makeup look to kind of just really go in for the more flame in her hands throwing sensation. And then I went in with the emerald green again over it so that it can give a little bit of like the darkness seeping into the light effect <laughs> because the neon green pigment did muffle out a bit of that emerald. Now that that is completed, I'm going to go ahead and apply the rest of my face, but in the meantime, go ahead and follow me on all of my handles. And there she is. It's giving, oh, what do you want me to do, Dr. Dragon? It's giving, Kim Possible, I am evil. It's giving, it's kind of not a phase, Mom, not going to lie. It's giving grown-up buttercup vibes. <laughs> <laughs> it's giving ooh la la. It's giving uh, ah yes, villainry is my passion. It's giving uh, <laughs> it's giving Mwah. As always, my lovely hummingbirds, if this is where you're leaving me, les mando mucha paz, muchos besos, y les recuerdo que miren hacia la luna, sending you much peace, many kisses, or money to always look up at the moon. But if you're not, join me for today's episode of Makeup and Motivation, where we're going to discuss so many things, including what it means to be the villain in somebody else's story. Hello, my lovely hummingbirds. Oh, what do we think about the makeup look? Hold on. I'm not close enough. What do we think about the makeup look? Is it Shigo enough? Is it giving, come here, Kimmy, I am evil. Is it giving, I can energetically, wait, what? I can manipulate energy <laughs> and have green flames shooting out of my hands. I hope so. <laughs> I'm a lovely woman. How's it going? I know I am. Very obviously not in full Shigo getup in comparison to the little makeup reveal that you saw at the beginning of this episode. The reason for that being, I have moved, as I mentioned in the introduction, temporarily. I'm chilling at my parents <laughs> at the time being until I can go and get my own place and situated and all this stuff. Once that happens, then... Uh, cosplays will be back in full swing and if you're like no why can't you just be full cosplay swing anyway well things are very much in boxes so <laughs> that is why 
So much has happened in the past couple of weeks since I last spoke with y'all. Besides the Something Is Waiting Band album release and Burger at Kumas and all that awesome shit, the show was amazing if you guys went. The first single off the record that dropped. It's the first track on the record. House of Mode fucking style. New cardigan. Different song. <laughs> missed out uh stay tuned i'll probably be posting some clips and stuff on my instagram but or even here on youtube we shall see we'll, we'll see how i'm feeling about all of it <laughs> that i get a chance to do considering my current circumstances now <laughs> so much has happened um, from lizzo being sued in like 38 pages of so much going on to the boat brawl too. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't laugh. Apparently, Kendall and Benito are uh, going strong. <laughs> I'm in love. Uh, and an update on the Megan Thee Stallion and Tory Lanez case. Uh, he's officially been sentenced for 10 years because of all the evidence against him and you know the internet is still patiently waiting for everybody to apologize to Megan Thee Stallion but here we are anyway uh in a twist that I definitely didn't friggin see coming Iggy Azalea submitted a letter to the judge saying how much of a stand-up man he is and how he's never hurt her and all this stuff and I'm really just sitting here like what girl what <laughs> I didn't even know you knew this man <laughs> Sure, but I, I was like that's peculiar I don't really quite get it and honestly what the fuck but in Lizzo news so if you guys are not caught up uh, essentially she is being sued by three previous members of her dance team and others it did come forward to corroborate the story that it is a toxic work environment that she fat shamed them plus a slew of other things toppled into this lawsuit and now people were saying how like what like first off i myself was like what the fuck because it ain't no way i'm still shook it's honestly heartbreaking because lizzo was such an empowering and body positive figure that it makes no sense lizzo did release a statement essentially denying to everything and somehow people were trying to catch up beyonce into all of this drama and i don't get it but okay so during her renaissance tour she in one of her songs uh pays homage to all the influential black women in music and artistry and <laughs> in one of the shows people were saying that she intentionally was shady by not saying lizzo's name and that she said badu three times over for erica badu instead and 
then, you know, people quickly disproved it, though, because on, well, I guess, you know, I, I don't know if there was anything to prove, <laughs> but on TikTok, people were like, no, I just went to her show last week, and, like, she wholeheartedly said, Lizzo, I love you, so, if people are kind of taking this as a stance that Beyonce is supporting her and stating it, that whatever the allegations are against Lizzo might not hold any value, I think that's a bold reach, to say the least. We don't know. We weren't in that conversation. Now, in other celebrity news, I'm just giggling to myself at just the video of Kendall and Bad Bunny making out, and I feel so slight rude for that, but I... I can't lie to y'all. I feel like it's PR. I really do. And I'm not alone in this sentiment. A lot of people across social media have stated like, yo, ain't no way this is for real. It can't be. <laughs> and maybe we're all just in shock and in denial that this is a thing. <laughs> but, oh yeah, supposedly they're going six months strong. I have my opinions and my beliefs about it, but what do I know? So... In other college Jenna news, uh, Kim, I saw this post where she was promoting Pre Nouveau. Pre Nouveau, this machine, it's like an MRI scan, but it's not. And I don't know who makes her posts, but MRIs don't have radiation. Anyway, uh, the procedure itself is an early detection system, and it's supposed to cost, I think, about like 2K. I might be wrong about that number, very wrong, because that don't sound right, <laughs> but <laughs> probably more, probably not. Either way, I don't know about y'all, but I don't got 2k to just shell out, which says a lot about the medical system here in this country, and a lot of people in her comment section were going off the rails, discussing it, telling her like, hey Kim, people are literally dying right now, first off, secondly, also, uh, a lot of people cannot afford regular checkups, let alone this. I think, and, 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 <laughs> it's not a hill I'm choosing to die on, but I think her heart might have been in a good place when she posted it and all that, but a lot of doctors did come out and say that this does actually, it brings a lot of issues because of, like, false positives and things of that nature. Y'all, I, I don't know. Anyway, in other Kim news, uh, she was caught being real giddy at Drake and everyone's like, oh my god, he ignored her, but like, his back was to us in the video, so we don't know, he might have winked at her. Kim is a good looking woman, I don't know. <laughs> I would imagine that somebody has a view from the other end, but will we ever see it? Who knows? Della works hard, but Christiana works harder. <laughs> now, as I mentioned in the introduction, we did hold a moment of silence for all those that lost their lives in the fires in Maui. It is a very, very... It's a fucking tragedy. Plus, just the state of the world right now. I don't know how there are people that are still denying that global warming exists and that the planet is not going through the chaos that it is climate wise um plus all of the flooding and hurricanes in the west side of the country especially california and arizona and all those places uh to everyone that is in those areas i hope you guys are safe i hope everything is okay but the reason that i bring it up is because for quite some time, including celebrities like Jason Mama, who is a Hawaii native, stated that people should stop doing tourist travel to Maui because of just the conditions and everything. And so many have called for people to stop traveling to Hawaii, period, because of the damage that has occurred to the land because of tourist travel. Now, of course, there are a lot of, like, varying statements that have been made where some are saying that tourism is helping to repair the economy there and all this stuff. I don't 
don't know. I saw a thing that Kylie went to celebrate her birthday privately to Hawaii, and I was just like, yo, wasn't Maui just on fire? And that's something that I was very confused by. Because, like... I, I get it. Look, I get it. If you guys are like, oh, but people are saving their vacation, they're not just going to stop. Look, yes, people save for however long they do to go and enjoy their vacations and all this. But like, if we have people that are native to the island, native to the state, native to the place where you are traveling to being like, yo, don't come here because there's way too much happening right now and it is very dangerous to not just the people that live here also very disrespectful but also could be very potentially dangerous for you and you still go how does that make sense i don't know this is my personal opinion but if you guys feel so inclined to give a donation to the links listed below. Uh, apparently these are very reputable sources to donate to. So if you're so inclined, cool. If not, cool. If you don't have the means to, I get it. Share. Whatever. Mm, I'm not Hawaiian or native or anything. I just think the whole situation was fucked up that like people are literally posting how horrible everything is and you know, a few days after it happened, we're just I don't know. It was just, I don't know, left, left a, not a good feeling in my stomach. In other travel related news. So if you guys have seen anything about requiring a visa to visit Europe in 2024, listen up. I definitely Googled all of this and was like, <laughs> What is happening? Why do we need it? When will we need it? How can I let my lovely hummingbirds know? Apparently, unless you are in Canada, Mexico, US, or South Korea, you will need a visa. Visas will be mandatory for individuals that are from Russia, India, and China including i think a hundred other countries is what i was reading in forbes and essentially the visa is required for 26 specific countries if you are going to be staying for more than a 90 day period so if you plan to go to europe for more than three months to any of the following 26 countries listed here then uh yeah you're you're gonna need the visa and the visa itself i think is not crazy priced but the insurance from what i was reading starts at like 30k euros in order to like make sure that if anything were to happen to you during your time there you have sufficient coverage to also cover for all of the countries for all my audio only listeners the countries in question here are all those within the shank Schengen? The Schengen region, which includes Austria, Belgium, Czech Republic, Denmark, Estonia, Finland, France, Germany, Greece, Hungary, Iceland, Italy, Latvia, Liechtenstein, Lithuania, Luxembourg, Malta, the Netherlands, Norway, Poland, Portugal, Slovakia, Slovenia, Spain, Sweden, and Switzerland. And you know the reason for this being like that was given is because of like safety precautions i have absolutely no proof of this whatsoever but it's a thought that came across my head when i first read it and i was like it's because everybody moved <laughs> it's because everybody moved and was and was doing like i'm gonna go live in europe while i work stateside and not go through proper channels i don't know it was just a thing that popped into my head i was like that's what it is isn't it <laughs> but my non non-source non-validated little aside you can't believe everything you read on the internet my lovely hummingbirds <laughs> reason being during my absence 
from the interwebs. Uh, apparently Lil Tay, who is this social media creator that became famous during like Bad Bobby days, right? She got famous because like her brother helped her essentially catapult her and she became like a real big thing. The story was going around that she had passed because her brother recently passed and then Lil Tay herself came out and was like, no, that's not true. That did not happen. The story was a lie. The name that was included isn't even my name. And apparently their family is now currently in investigation because of like abuse. Hopefully Lil Tay and her brother are completely okay and safe because what the fuck that was so wild the so and the reason that like they're under investigation is because the parents were the ones that stated it or it was like a family member that stated that they were deceased and honestly that sounds so suspicious and i do not like it because it's like why was that something they uh circulated sounded real plotty to me and no me gusta in other news congratulations to shikari richardson she fucking did it she is a world champion for the women's 100 meter dash for on a global scale too so like that's fucking incredible i'm so proud of her if you guys do not know who shikari richardson is so this happened we covered it here on pop culture i want to say a year ago want to say a year ago a year or two i don't know what year we're in 2023 year or two uh she had faced a scandal where people were talking shit because they were like no if you're an olympic athlete then you know that like smoking weed is prohibited and you know she was very apologetic and felt so sorry because you know she had done it she had lost family at the time it was a real fucked up moment. So many people dogged her online. They trolled her. They said all this shit. I was like, what's the fucking point if it's already pretty much legal everywhere? So, like, why is it such a thing? But then, like, eh. <laughs> people were really on her ass about it and vilified her to some degree. And now here she is, a fucking world champion congratulations my button is in a bag somewhere in this apartment <laughs> um, otherwise i would ring it but in post edit here is some fucking applause because you deserve it queen so big shout out to she she really fucking deserves that that was incredible my whole heart she's a badass bro and she got nails gorgeous fucking nails if she does it like hell yeah Anyway, <laughs> also congratulations to all UPS workers whose salary will be increasing to 170k was the headlines that I was seeing. It is awesome. I am so happy that the strikes worked, that all those that are in union are getting their recompensa, rightfully so. Because all my lovely hummingbirds out there, if you are like, why are they getting so much money? You try working on a UPS truck in this heat especially this fucking crazy ass heat that we have in chicago at the time of me recording no <laughs> no they deserve that I'm so proud of them hopefully the working conditions improve in the trucks as well that would be fucking awesome because i don't think they have like a proper heating and cooling system in the trucks either while the 170k is dope let's let's better those working conditions anyway congratulations to zoe de chanel and jonathan scott on their engagement and congratulations to serena williams and alexis ohanian on their welcoming of their second baby <laughs> so cute i love it i love good good happy stories they make me happy <laughs> In not so happy news, so Rao Alejandro and Rosalia are officially broken up. <laughs> I know, I know. I mentioned this in like a couple episodes ago or whatever, but since then, Rao did release a song called "Hayami Hana" by Raúl, and so here's the thing, right? 
let me let me get situated in my seat here <laughs> so i don't know if you guys noticed but i sure fucking did because i saved the song because i was like okay we're gonna save it as soon as i saw like people were like oh my god if it were me i would have taken him back and i was like i need to go listen to the song and i listened to it and i was like oh i'm a weak bitch because i would have taken his ass back too <laughs> the reason why i was like <laughs> check it so the song was released right and on initial release of hayami hana he sounds so hurt and heartbroken right but there i think it was like last week i it would like jump because i i knew the two songs that were, that were the one before and the one that i had after it saved on spotify at least and i was like where'd the song go and i was like interesting interesting i was like maybe rosaria was like yo take that shit down <laughs> I wouldn't blame her because in the song it's so, it's so gut wrenching, and from the lyrics themselves, it really sounds like she was the one that initiated the breakup. But there was never, like, Rao Alejandro's standpoint. What he says is that it was nothing to do with like infidelity or anything like that. It was just life happens. They had to part ways. Everyone's assumption is essentially career shit. And the song does hint at it, but the song also hints at some other things. And I do want to do like a breakdown of it eventually, but I don't think this was their first like breakup moment. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so the song got taken down and it came back up and I noticed it the other day. I think it was yesterday or day before. And I was like, oh my God, it's back up. So I was listening to it obsessively, of course. And I text one of my besties who we talk about music with, and I was like, yo, I'm listening, and I'm trying to figure out what sounds different. And she was like, oh, it definitely sounds like he's sung it a few times now. And I was like, yes. I was like, he doesn't sound as broken anymore, and it sounds very, like, it sounds cleaned up. It sounds more like he did this shit in his studio versus freestyling it while he was crying about the situation. And oh, I made the joke, and I was like, you know... Cause she probably was like, no, do better. <laughs> Clean it up. <laughs> but the song definitely sounds more like they were like, okay, it's a good song. Let's fix it versus like, let's completely take it down. I don't know. You know, maybe just today's going to be like, yo, if we ever do get back together, I need you to clean this shit up because we can't sound I can't have you crying on a freaking hit song like this, but my jokes aside, it was a good song. It was very heartbreaking. Uh, I'm not gonna lie to you. I really hope, hope, I hope they get back together. They were so cute. Their songs together were so fire. <laughs> they were goals, man. They, they gave me hope. Anyway. In other breakup news, Natalie Portman and her husband of 11 years are divorcing. I have mentioned this prior to in a different episode, pretty sure. But it was over cheating allegations that they were not able to surpass. In other relationship news, so Britney Spears and Sam Asghari are ending their marriage uh, after six years together, if I'm not mistaken. They're calling it quits and they, well... Sam, at least on his stories, made the announcement and asked for privacy in the matter. Brittany made a post saying, you know, she's in disbelief or whatever, and she's, like, in pain from it. Obviously, she's heartbroken and handling the situation. Now, Brittany's posts have been erratic for some time in the sense where they're, like, she's just, she's just out here doing it, letting it all hang out enjoying every ounce of that freedom that she finally has and i don't know why the relationship ended i really can't speak on that because i'm not a part of that relationship i wish them both the best i hope that Brittany heals from this as well and i hope you know she takes the time that she needs in order to go for bigger and better as well as for him sad 
because they looked happy. And I know a lot of people have all these conspiracies about this man and her and their relationship. And I get that. But I don't know. I just I just wish them well because at this point, like, what the fuck I say, it ain't gonna matter. <laughs> it's not like it's gonna make them get back together. <laughs> Anyway, to keep this controversy train going, which, I mean, that's not a controversy, they're just getting divorced, but <laughs> in controversial news, so the football star Michael O'Hur, who is the inspiration for the movie The Blind Side, has come out to state that the people that took him in essentially conned him out of millions of dollars for his story uh, they basically made him sign his rights away at the age of 18 fucked up situation people were kind of involving sandra bullock into it and they were like oh my god you should give up your oscar for it he came out defended her he was like no she doesn't have to do that because like women didn't know about the situation he barely found out just how fraudulent all of it had been i don't know where the situation currently stands but i hope he fucking sues them his like adoptive family i don't think they actually ever adopted him was part of it like it wasn't legal or some shit i don't know either way that's a fucked up situation i hope they get what's coming anyway uh <laughs> in more controversy so bradley cooper i'm gonna end with the bradley cooper story because <laughs> first i want to talk about rachel ziegler <laughs> because what the fuck no, let's go Bradley first. <laughs> We're gonna do Bradley first. So, because Bradley's has a smoother ending to this controversy of sorts. So, Bradley Cooper is starting, starting, he is starring in a Netflix film about Leonard Bernstein. Uh, he is a musical composer and he was in charge of creating the score for West Side Story. The film is titled Maestro. And when the trailer came out, people were very quick in the comments to accuse Bradley Cooper of Jew face. Now, the reason for this being is because he did use a prosthetic nose in order to enhance his to more so fit the physical features of Leonard Bernstein. Now, the reason that I'm saying it has a somewhat happier ending because a lot of the people that were, you know, giving him all the backlash in the comments, so much of it happened so fast and so much in amount that Leonard's own kids came out and released a joint statement. Sorry about that. Had to re-up on my caffeine. So essentially, Leonard's kids came out and allotted bradley saying you know they were involved every step of the way and their father would also be in agreement with the decisions made by bradley cooper for the film i think he's also directing it uh besides that they also said that you know if anyone was giving him backlash it was very it reminded them it was very reminiscent of the way that their father was also attacked during his life and his time in movie creation and all of that. So, can I say that people have no right to be offended by it? I think it's a really yes and no situation. Yes, because of like whatever reasons that they have behind it, sure, but also, I don't know. If Leonard's family is saying it's okay in this instance, does it make it okay? That, that's, I'm gonna leave that up to personal opinion. Now, to end on the Rachel Ziegler chaos, that is Snow White. So, <laughs> oh my god, I cannot. Uh, she essentially got creamed and dragged through the entirety of social media over the past few weeks because she hasn't had the best I, mm, I can't say she hasn't had the best time i guess she hasn't had the right choice words for her portrayal of the titular character of snow white 
she is going to be in the film and if i'm not mistaken gal gadot is going to be the evil queen now the reason that she's getting so much flack for it is because in comparison to other disney princesses that have taken up the mantle in the live roles where they're like oh my god i love this this is beautiful like i'm so happy to be doing this she essentially has just dogged the character and said she saw it once never saw it again she got scared but people have been pulling up very like contradicting stories as far as to her views on the character in the film itself and this one person made a really good point saying you know if disney's pr team was not cool with what she's saying then they would definitely not allow her to keep saying it type of thing like the way that they do so many gag orders on like marvel as an example and one of the things here and it's it's been an issue that is being brought up especially because of the film is that like one of the things that she said was how this movie was not going to be about her love story and about her being saved by the prince and all this stuff and kind of it was taken a wrong way when she made a jab at her male co-star who is going to be playing the prince and how like oh it's hollywood baby like you know your lines might be cut type of thing and everyone's like yo considering there's a strike right now that's not like it's not a good look i do agree that like if disney's pr team was like yo you can't fucking say that she wouldn't be saying it the fact that she is i think disney is really trying to push like this is a different kind of disney movie or it's a different kind of princess movie because they're pushing the narrative that like she can be the leader that her father told her she can be and all this stuff and that's beautiful and all but people have brought up to light like why is it so bad <laughs> why are we making it such an emphasis for it to be so bad that a woman wants to do love and wants to be in love and be a princess and do all these things and i'm like out here like yeah i kind of agree with that because it's already been done right snow white has been done so many times and it's been done with her being a fucking warrior and her being uh, uh rescuing the prince and her being happily in love and also being a strong princess warrior like in once upon a time once upon a time did it so good that is such a good series and if you guys have not seen it yet this is not a sponsorship but definitely go watch it because it is all good and the prince and snow actually fell in love in real life and they're together and they give me hope for love along with ryan reynolds and blake lively anyway <laughs> All my craziness aside, on today's podcast episode of Pop Culture, clearly we've been going around people that have taken the being a villain in somebody else's story, not in the way that I meant it. <laughs> but we'll get to that at the end of the episode and why that is even the theme for today's episode of Makeup and Motivation. You took a shot for every time I said episode. I am so sorry. Is your liver okay? Anyway. <laughs> One of the things that I do want to discuss, and I am going to do a actual rated episode of this, so <laughs> I'm not gonna. I can't. I cannot articulate. <laughs> so Carol G released a Mañana Será Bonito Bichota season remix, and I have my thoughts. I have my opinions. We're gonna get into that. But the reason I bring it up is because the MTV VMAs are around the corner. And if you have not yet casted your votes, my lovely hummingbirds, please do so. No, this is not sponsored by MTV. It'd be dope, though. But for Artist of the Year, we have Beyonce. We have Doja Cat. We have Karol G. We have Nicki Minaj. We have Shakira and Taylor Swift. Yes, Artist of the Year this year is dominated by the ladies. And a big round of applause to every single one of them. I know, don't really find me in the comments. Don't be like, oh my god, Monroe, but I like the shit Doja Cat's doing. I'm gonna talk about Paint the Town Red in next week's episode. <laughs> because I'm not surprised <laughs> i'm really not of uh, the fact that she dropped that song and i'm gonna get into why next week but cast your votes 
I'm excited for the VMAs this year. Demi Lovato is performing, Carol G is performing, Stray Kids are performing, Main Skin is performing. Those are the performers for this year. I'm excited. I can't wait. Especially the fact of like all those artists and uh, two of those artists are Latina women and I am uh, so stoked because how fucking yeah. Anyway. <laughs> that aside another award show that is happening and yes this is a completely biased opinion of who you should vote for here <laughs> well i can't tell you who to vote for for the bmas i can ask for a huge favor my lovely hummingbirds so coming to chicago on september 30th oh the uh vmas are september 12th <laughs> But Chicago, September 30th, is the 41st annual Chicago Music Awards. And for the Chicago Music Awards, nominated for Best Rock Entertainer is none other than Lever. If you guys don't know who Lever is, you should definitely go check out the episodes of Pop Culture Interviews at Lever. <laughs> Um, they are a local rock band here in Chicago and if you guys get a chance to definitely launch your votes vote in every category of course it is really incredible if you do I would appreciate it from the bottom of my heart uh, and yeah go vote for them <laughs> and go check out their music and all of it I'm so excited that they are nominated I'm obviously voting for them and I hope you guys do too. Uh, <laughs> besides that, a uh, shout out to Jeff Aquino, by the way, from the band. He let me know that they were in the running for Best Rock Entertainer. And I was like, yo, I'm definitely going to talk about it on pop culture. That is incredible. So go vote. <laughs> um, anyway, my lovely hummingbirds, if you notice hella pauses in today's episode, video wise anyway because if you're listening audio only you probably won't notice them as much but if you are on youtube and you're watching me and you're like girl you are doing so many transitions mercury is in retrograde <laughs> and my articulation is going down the freaking toilet with it and yes mercury is going to be in retrograde the entirety of virgo season just like venus i think venus is getting out of retrograde at the end of virgo season we got a whole lot of retrogrades going on so if you're like, it's all chaos right now, it makes sense. Don't worry, you're not alone, my lovely hummingbirds. But for today's episode, for today's topic of conversation, it is what it means to be the villain in somebody else's story. Now, today's character, the reason that I used Shigo as an example was because while she is a villain in the Kim Possible series and, you know, her role is to do whatever Dr. Draken says and, <laughs> and take down Team Possible and participate in all his plans or whatever. Uh, she is, as she told Kimmy, she is evil. <laughs> and every time I say it now, all I hear is freaking Spongebob being like, every villain is lemons. <laughs> You know what they say, uh, if the world gives you lemons, make lemonade, but <laughs> I love Shigo's character. She's a baddie, obviously. Look at her. Hottie Lamati over there. But also, Shigo has a very high moral compass to some degree. So she still, while she is a villain, she is not like mentally completely deranged like she is still very logical she has her moments she takes breathing breaks when dr draken is entirely too much and when she gets frustrated with him while she is more evil as presented by the evil mita uh <laughs> than him she still is more like mm, maybe don't do that that's wrong type of thing she yells at kim for lying to her parents she refuses to hurt animals and that just makes her amazing in my book but also there was one episode i can't remember whose wheelchair they were trying to take and she was like yo that's not right so i i don't know i love shigo love her character uh is a baddie <laughs> love her green and black aesthetic but also 
I don't know why I thought about this when I was, like, looking into it, but her storyline is essentially that her and her brothers got hit by, like, a rainbow meteor, and they each developed powers, and all of their suits are, like, different colors or whatever. The fact that she is filled with so much rage, right, and her powers are green, um... <laughs> I was like, huh, I wonder if her, and it's probably not that deep, right? But <laughs> I was like, what if her and all her siblings each represent a different, like, chakra? And that's why, like, their powers are, like, revolved around that and the manipulation of each one. And she goes is manipulation of energy. And, like, she can blast the, her little glowing green things and it can go from anything from stunning people to massive explosions and i was like you know when someone is hurt in the heart um that can be very small stunning moments of <gasps> to rage you know so i don't know just a thought <laughs> a thought with no basis whatsoever but a thought nonetheless uh, <laughs> Anyway, besides that, the reason for using Shigo for today's uh, We're All the Villain in Somebody Else's Story is because on today's Makeup and Motivation, we are covering recovering from people pleasing. Originally, the character that I was going to use for today's episode was Mal from Descendants, who is Maleficent and Hades' daughter. And I just... I movies anyway i'm an auntie y'all so <laughs> even if even if i weren't i'd probably still watch them but i originally saw them because of my brother's kids and i'm hooked what can i say shout out to everybody in those movies uh but in the movie there's like this theme of that i can't remember if mal says it or if Maleficent says it, somebody said it, they were like, you know, we're all the villain in somebody else's story. And this is around the time where Sleeping Beauty's daughter becomes evil. <laughs> Spoilers, y'all. She becomes evil because she's pissed that Belle and Beast's son is in love with Mal and they're going to get married and she's going to be the queen. And she's like, it should have been me, this whole thing. And in Mal's happiness, she inadvertently becomes, of course, I'm skipping a lot of details. This is just the gist of it. But she becomes the villain in, what was her name? Hmm, I don't remember. It was fucked up. <laughs> in Aurora's daughter's life because she essentially came and ruined all of it was she originally intending to be with Belle and Beast's kid no she wasn't did she fall in love eventually sure did uh, <laughs> in that she became the villain in her story and you're like Monroe what's the point of this well my lovely hummingbirds in the journey of self-love and healing and self-healing and all that good shit that is life so if you are brand new to pop culture hi welcome my lovely hummingbirds on monday's episodes i give you all the tea and gossip of the week going on in artistry and media and local news and international news and all that good shit plus we also do some mental health and uh makeup and <laughs> hopefully some motivation along the way to you know help out and let you know you're not alone in this but based off like things that I myself have learned along the way or noticed or shit like that anyway <laughs> you know I should really start including that in the intro <laughs> like the intro intro instead of just at the end <laughs> we talk about the topic of conversation anywho do it next week uh, <laughs> what does it mean to be the villain in someone else's story so in the journey of self-love and self-healing during the process of if you were in the role of being a people pleaser at a point right because not everyone that is traumatized becomes a people pleaser i can't state that but if 
you did experience it at one point or another in your life where you felt the need to always do what everyone asked of you all the time in order to receive whether it was validation from them safety protection some what you perceive to be love at the time or some type of like benefit from it then this is for you <laughs> uh no but if you did all of that or dealt with that one of the hardest aspects can be to then not do things for others and i don't mean in the sense of like oh you know to stop being a people pleaser you can never help anybody else ever again in your life no that is not what that means it means placing a boundary and not exceeding your limitations so people pleasing is essentially this and it is the act of doing and overdoing and overexerting yourself for other people their needs their wants their desires in order to feel like you my lovely hummingbirds matter like you just want peace for the day like you just want everything to be okay depending on whatever your situation may be and i saw this interesting tiktok the other day where she was like uh people pleasing as a form of manipulation and like self-victimization and all this stuff and i was sitting there and i was listening to it and i'm like i guess it could be for some uh for others or at least in my experience it's more this anxiety of like i you know like i don't want to be abandoned i want to make sure that everything is okay i want to help every way because if i'm not helping then i'm not doing something right type of thing is the way that i view it to each their own experience but for you my lovely hummingbirds one of the things that i personally noticed in the journey of soul love and self healing is once you break those people pleasing tendencies next little thing that kicks in is the bad guy mentality what does that mean well the bad guy mentality can take on various forms and often more than not to the extreme of those forms where it can be a oh i am the bad guy everything i do is wrong which borders into self-deprecation and we'll get into that in a second but also the i'm never going to do anything that anyone ever asks me again because i'm the one that always gets burned mentality and that can be into the self-victimization category it is the phase where many can find themselves in a spot of going fucking wild because you spent so much time and effort on everybody else that you're like well i am going to hyper indulge and hyper do things or completely shut down now it doesn't always immediately show up as extremes it can show up in like very subtleties very harsh subtleties even and even for many as rage when things are being asked especially if there is some some feeling of like there is no reciprocity in the situation now in life as things work there is not always an equal give and take my lovely hummingbirds and that is why discernment is necessary now moving into the self-deprecation aspect when we have been people pleasers for so long the notion of if i say no i'm garbage if I say no, that's all that will be noticed. If I say no, it's this. And we start going down this route of believing the negative, the negative notions that we tell ourselves in regards to placing a boundary or saying no to someone for the first time and for the first few times and probably even thereafter. It is okay. It is normal to not feel the best when you first start to do it or even later on in life when you place a new boundary with a new person no you're not a fuck up no you're not a screw up no they're not gonna hate you and if they do then that is something that you need to not really deal with that is something that they have to handle within themselves now my lovely hummingbirds we are not perfect we are not all knowing we don't know i definitely don't <laughs> but <laughs> what the fuck did i say the other day who was i talking to i don't know 
But I was like, you know, one of the things in spirituality is that while I know so much, I know that I don't know a fucking thing. (laughs) Because the universe is like, look, watch this plot twist. Anyway. (laughs) One of the things that can help, or at least that I've personally found helpful in this is acknowledging your limits acknowledging what goes against you and your beliefs because oftentimes in people pleasing really is an act of like you kind of give your power away in order to gain permanence in some other method and it's never actual permanence just pseudo permanence because now the person that holds the power is no longer you it's no longer equal and the power struggle once you break from it starts to become internal and it can get really hard to notice when your lines are being crossed and when you yourself are crossing lines in order to basically it's like you you bounce back into like what you've always known because of past experiences now with the whole self-deprecation one of the things that can help or at least that i found helpful is acknowledging your limits we all have limitations And I know while there are no limits in life and you can do whatever you set your mind to, our bodies, at least for me personally, has constraints, right? And also mental space. If there is something that you are not okay with, it's okay to say no and to exit a situation. Whether that is job, family, friends, relationships, lovers, partners whatever you want to call it whatever the situation may be at hand it is okay to say no it is okay to walk away it is okay to acknowledge you know your faults within it as well because one of the things is a boundary is not set in place for you to control the actions of another individual a boundary is set in place for you to control your decisions and actions with the world around you and within yourself as well it is for you to say like you know what not comfortable with that so i'm not going to absorb the situation now and i'm going to remove myself from it and you decide how you act accordingly and also how you uphold the decisions that you take in said situations also the reason that i said acknowledge our own actions in it is because we are not perfect my lovely hummingbirds (laughs) we are not perfect beings and one of the hardest aspects of like people pleasing you can't save everybody but not also that you can't save everybody not everybody's asking you to save them Not everybody is asking you to do. Sometimes, all you need to do is listen, is be there. Not everyone is seeking a solution. And when you have been placed in situations where you always had to either be the middleman or the person taking and finding a solution doing x y and z because if you didn't do it it would never get done and all this stuff sometimes things aren't supposed to be done not by your hand and if you're like well blah 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 this person and that person yeah and my lovely hummingbirds sometimes that form can take i didn't ask you to do that Yes, that is true. And if you are like, I hear that all the time, pull back and look at why it is that you are doing these things and are you doing it from a space of like, are you doing it from a space of like, I'm doing this 
genuinely from the goodness of my soul or I am doing this because there is an underlying expectation behind my actions. As far as the boundaries to not go beyond your limitations and beliefs, are you going along with everything that somebody says because you want to spare feelings or you don't want to be the bad guy because of what you believe? It is okay to stand your ground. It is okay to speak up. Be mindful when you do. What does it mean to be the villain in someone else's story? Sometimes being the villain can be saying no. It's like, I don't know if you guys ever deal with toddlers or <laughs> little kids. Or if you are a parent to a teenager or just an adult figure in a kid's life or a teen's life. And you say no to them for the first time and it's a tantrum or they're crying or even the I hate you and you ruined my life type of thing real after school special it seems <laughs> real angsty all that and you're like damn you know because words hurt and if they hurt you you're like damn that that fucking hurt ow in those scenarios you know if if it really is like a for their good and all that good shit right and you have like some actual responsibility over the person <laughs> then hold your ground i know it hurts and those words suck but as Motisha said in wednesday i am told girls your age say mean things and that's okay <laughs> anyway if this is about a different type of situation right this isn't a journey of self-love and self-healing the first time you say no the first time you set a boundary the first time that you uh, set a boundary with somebody new it's not gonna be easy and it is gonna f it is gonna fucking suck and it is gonna come with some shitty feelings along the way of like damn i suck for this but sometimes being the villain in somebody else's story doesn't come from you rejecting whatever it is being asked of you. Sometimes it is from simply being you and simply existing and doing the things that you do because you are upholding who you are as a person and the values that you have within yourself. And sometimes, my lovely hummingbirds, being the villain is gaining the understanding that it doesn't take much to be a villain in somebody else's story. And sometimes it means that you didn't start off that way. And sometimes you have to realize that it has absolutely nothing to do with you. And everything to do with a reflection that people see of themselves in you. And sometimes, my lovely hummingbirds, being the villain in somebody else's story means you were simply a dick. <laughs> because we all have it. We ain't perfect. We've all had our moments where we're like, damn, I fucked up on that one. Or like, ooh, <laughs> that, was, that was not smart. But with those acknowledgments, then comes forgiveness. <laughs> close my eyes because it's not the easiest one for me the uh crave to be petty is so real <laughs> for me personally uh it's so real but forgiveness is very important and while, yes, my lovely hummingbirds, I understand that you cannot always forgive everyone for some of the actions that they do it is important to acknowledge that rough shit happens to everyone and oftentimes people's actions are not so much indicative of us but indicative of themselves but also it is important to if you're like i'm not there yet that's cool that's okay i know there are some things i don't know if i will ever be able to forgive in life but i'm working on it because I don't want the weight. The weight of that. The pain of that. I don't want to hold on to that shit. I don't want to be a big grudging ass bitch either. <laughs> it's not cute. <laughs> but 
also the importance of forgiving yourself. Because as I stated, we're not perfect. I'm definitely not. And it's the importance of knowing how to not just forgive the people that have wronged us and hurt us, but also acknowledging those we can't forgive, those moments we do regret, and forgiving the past versions of ourselves for what they had to do to survive said moments, and even forgiving the past versions of ourselves for the fucked up shit that we did do if we did do fucked up shit, because like then why we do that? And learning to grow and wanting to grow from it. Because I can't remember who said this, but they were like, you know, the fine line between you and a, a shitty person is that you acknowledge that you've been shitty and you're willing to do something about it. So, my lovely hummingbirds, being the villain in somebody else's story in the journey of self love and self healing is the acknowledgement that in some people's story, you're their canon event. <laughs> First off. You are the villain in somebody else's story. And what's the fucking post? They're like, make sure that you're the reason that some... No, not make sure. You are the reason that someone is either drunk, crying, or fucking themselves <laughs> in this moment. But also, my lovely hummingbirds. That holds true for being the villain in somebody else's story. You are somebody's canon event of why they do the things they do and why they are the way they are and the reason that they want more in life. Or... It's simply because you chose to do better and move forward and be yourself and accept yourself. How can we be the villain in somebody else's story in a healthy way? Learn. Learn from your past experiences. Learn from your mistakes. Learn from the lessons that get thrown at you in the moments that you were genuinely a victim and in the moments that you were genuinely hurt and in the moments that you were like damn that was a fucked up situation and i need to move past that right it is okay to embrace every part of you because it to be the villain or the anti-hero or whatever you want to call it the reason for it is you have to embrace you at every facet at every stage and love it even the gross parts like Miley Cyrus said in her new song yes I did all of that crazy shit but that is because I was once young and didn't know any better and now that you do my lovely hummingbirds and you are choosing to do better because you know better because sometimes even if we know better we don't choose to do better I know I definitely haven't when I know better in some instances I'm like but that looks fun and I know I might regret it in like six months from now but I'm gonna go do it anyway <laughs> The point is, my lovely hummingbirds, to be the villain in somebody else's story in a good way. Essentially, that means embrace everything that you are, all that you are, who you are, and keep pushing forward in what you know is meant for you and what you're meant to do in this life. And if people really want to take it to the left to and they're like, fuck you. Uh, I don't know who said it. It's like they're, they're just confused fans. <laughs> Anyway, I'm done rambling for you for today, my lovely hummingbirds. I hope you enjoyed the Shego makeup look. Let me know if you recreate it. I will catch y'all tomorrow. We're going to see what happens. But <laughs> that's it from me for you for today, my lovely hummingbirds. I love you all so much. And remember, even if you are the villain in somebody else's story, make sure that you are the hero in yours. And stop trying to be a captain save a hoe for everybody. The only hoe you got to save is you. <laughs> Okay, I'm done. I love you all so much. Have a good one. As always, les mando mucha paz, muchos besos. Y les recuerdo que miren hacia la luna. I know, it's a, it, it's a NASA mo moon. <laughs> it's a picture of the moon from NASA. <laughs> oh my god. As always, my lovely hummingbird sending you much... <laughs> can't articulate. Much love, many kisses, and reminding you to always look up at the moon. I love you all so much. I'll catch you on the next one. Have a good one. Bye!